In this lesson, our goal is to be able to express the square roots and cube roots of whole numbers and the square root of a monomial algebraic expression in simplest radical form. Let's begin by examining the parts of a radical. This is a radical expression right here. This is the root symbol or the radical symbol. Underneath the radical is the radicand. And then the little number that sits there on that little radical arm is called the index or the root. Today we're going to focus on simplifying radicals. We're going to start with the square root. When the square root is in simplest form, the radicand, remember the radicand, that part that's under the radical, has no perfect square factors other than one. Now remember the square root is written like this, where the index is not written. Square root could be shown with an index of two, but that's the same as when no index is shown at all. Examples. Write the following radicals in simplest form. So remember that simplest form means there are no perfect square factors left in the radical. Number one, square root of 24. Now, first of all, it's important to remember your perfect squares. Off to the side in the margin, we have a list of the perfect squares that you should have memorized. 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, and so on and so forth. If you don't remember them, you can always multiply 5 times 5, 25, 6 times 6, 36. And then these numbers right here are the perfect squares. These numbers that we got by squaring each integer. Those are the perfect squares that we want to have memorized. And I notice in this list, none of them say 24. The closest one we have is 25. But there is a perfect square that divides evenly into 24. If I examine numbers smaller than 24, 16 is a perfect square, but it does not divide evenly into 24, nor does 9, but 4 does. 4 times 6 makes 24. So I'm going to rewrite this radical as the square root of 4 times 6, which means the same thing as the square root of 4 times the square root of 6. I know the square root of 4 because 2 squared is 4, so the square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 6, well, 6 is not a perfect square, so we'll leave that as the square root of 6. Now, does 6 have a perfect square factor? It does not. 4 cannot divide into 6, and that's the, small, that's the largest number that's smaller than 6. So here, I'm finished with 2 square root of 6. Number 2, 3 times the square root of 32. So again, I ask myself, is 32 one of these perfect squares? And I see it's not. It's close to 36, but 32 is not a perfect square. So what perfect square divides evenly into 32? Well, 4 goes into 32, because 4 times 8 makes 32, but it's not the biggest perfect square. 16 is. So I'm going to rewrite 32 as 16 times 2. 3, we'll just hang out on the outside, multiplied to that radical. Similar to this one. I'm going to break up this radical as square root of 16 times square root of 2. I know square root of 16, that's 4. 
because 4 squared makes 16. So 3 times 4 times square root of 2. And I can simplify a bit more because 3 times 4 makes 12. So 12 times the square root of 2 will be my final simplified answer. I know that it's in simplest form because there is no perfect square factor inside the radical. Number three. Square root of 27 x to the fifth y cubed. So beginning with the number, looking at our perfect squares, we know that 27 is not a perfect square. But 9 is a perfect square, and it divides evenly into 27. So I'm going to rewrite this radical, 27, as 9 times 3, because 9 is a perfect square. Now for the variables, let's remember that x to the fifth means x, 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 5x's. And y cubed means y, y, y three y's multiplied together. Now, first, we can begin with the numbers. Square root of nine times square root of three, square root of x, 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 and square root of y, y, y. Now, in the numbers, square root of nine makes 3, and this is not a perfect square, so I leave it in the radical. Now when I'm taking the square root, remember that means I need 2 of the same number multiplied to get a perfect square. So if I'm looking for a square root, that's what it is when I don't see an index, square root, I'm looking for 2 of the same factor. So I see I have two x's, so I can take out an x. I see two more x's, so I can take out another x, but then there's one left over. I don't have two more, so that one that's left over will stay in the radical. Let's go to the y's. I need two of them. I have two y's, so a y comes out of the radical, and then I have one left over. Let's simplify this. 3 square root of 3, x times x makes x squared, square root of x, and y square root of y. Now let's take everything that's outside the radical and multiply those together. 3x squared y, and then everything that's inside the radical and put that under one big radical, 3xy. And there we have our simplest form of this radical. Number four, square root of negative 64. Well, I know that 64 is a perfect square, but that's 8 times 8. What's going to make negative 64 when I multiply two of the same thing? 8 times 8 makes positive 64. Negative 8 times negative 8 makes positive 64. I can't multiply two of the same thing to get negative 64, so this one is not possible in the set of real numbers. Let's look at the cubed root in simplest form. Again, the radicand will have no perfect cube factors other than one. So just a reminder in the margin, a list of the perfect cubes. Two cubed makes eight, three cubed makes 27, 4 cubed is 64, 5 cubed 125, and 6 cubed 216. 
There's many, many more. However, these are the ones that we're going to see the most often. It would be helpful to memorize those. Examples. Write the following radicals in simplest form. Number five, cubed root of 24. So for cubed root, notice the index is a three. So I have the radical symbol with a three as the index. 24 is not a perfect cube, but eight divides into 24 evenly. So let's break this up as the cubed root of eight times three. The cubed root of eight we know, and the cubed root of three we cannot take evenly. Cubed root of eight makes two because two cubed is eight. So this is two, and this is cubed root of three. I know that I'm finished because three doesn't have any perfect cube factors. None of these perfect cubes divide evenly into three. So this is my final answer in simplest form. Number six, three times the cubed root of 32. You may notice that these problems are very similar to the ones when we did the square root. But the square root, we were looking for perfect squares, like 16 goes into 32. But in the cubed root, we're looking for perfect cubes. What perfect cube divides evenly into 32? Eight does, and nothing bigger than eight. So we'll write three, and then the cubed root of eight times four. Again, the three that hangs out outside multiplied to our radical, the cubed root of eight times the cubed root of four. Three, the cubed root of eight is two, and I can't take the cubed root of four, nor do I have any perfect cubes that divide evenly into four. And then we simplify. Three times two is six times the cubed root of four. Let's look at one with variables, like number seven. Cubed root of 27 x to the fifth y cubed. 27 is a perfect cube. For the variables, we'll write them out like we did before. So we'll write the cubed root. 27 is already a perfect cube, so we don't have to break that apart. X to the fifth, remember, is five X's multiplied, and Y cubed is Y times Y times Y. The cubed root of 27 is three. And remember, when we're looking for cube roots, now we're looking for three of the same factor. So three X's mean I can take out an X and I can't find another set of three, so I have two left over inside of the radical. So inside of the radical, I'm going to have X squared left over. Then the Y's, I have another set of three factors of the same, so that makes a Y that I can pull out with no more Y's left over. So here's my final answer, 3XY times the cubed root of X squared. Now remember when we tried to take the square root of negative 64? Well, we couldn't do that because two negatives can't multiply to make a negative. But when we take the cubed root of a negative, we can do that. Notice that 64 is a perfect cube because four times four times four is 64. So if four times four times four is 64, what is negative four times negative four times negative four? A negative times a negative makes a positive and then times negative four, a positive times a negative, makes a negative. So negative four cubed makes negative 64, which means the cubed root of negative 64 is negative four.
take a couple of minutes to write a short summary. What is the difference between a square root and a cube root? How do we simplify them differently? Remember to memorize your perfect cubes and your perfect squares. See you in class.